like to turn to somebody, encourage them, hug them, and your baby sees Sounds like everybody's having a good time. That's a good thing. Keep on having a good time. You know, the Bible says not for assembling ourselves, not for assembling ourselves together. As a matter, some is, but exhorting one another. What's that mean? Encouraging one another? So encourage each other. Go ahead. Just turn around and encourage somebody. Tell me, love. Love that guy. Love that guy. Love you. 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 Love that guy. Love the Spirit of God, let him let work in us, encourage each other, because that evil day that's approaching is here. All the wickedness that's out in this crazy world. How many understand? How many's been there just recently? I was there, but I came back. But I took the light in the darkness. Now you think about that. There's a whole lot of crazy stuff going on out there. Amen. I mean, that's truly, truly unbelievable. But the people that know their God were able to resist it all. And not only that, but as we come together, encourage one another, as we go back out there, we're the light that shines in the darkness. And that's what the darkness needs. It needs some light, doesn't it? That's what we need. That's why, you know, we come together. This is exciting, just to be in the presence of God. How many just, you starting to catch that? You know, I don't know, is there still more for you? No. Is there more want to in you to serve God? There isn't want to to serve that crazy lifestyle anymore. The more, you, listen, the more you're in the presence of God, the more He's going to take over. The more you allow Him to have you, man, pretty soon there ain't going to be a whole lot of want to in there except to go back out there and show them that they're wrong. Man, I don't know, something inside me just... Oh, Kasha, Rabba Bakashi did the Andaya, Koba Bakashi, she had the Arab Bakashi, Shaki, you got the Andaya. The Lord thy God would say to each other, one of us, I made you, I made you for a purpose, I've given you talents, I've given you abilities. Special talents, and special abilities, what I'm going to use to build my kingdom. Yes, I want to bless you, yes, I want to encourage you, only listen, let me have my way, and I'll show you who I really am. I want to make myself so real to you that you're not going to be able to understand what I'm able to do. Things are so wonderful. Give the Lord a good praise. Oh. Amen.
I'll tell you what's happening to me, because just learn who God is. Never. In fact, he says, come unto me, all you labor heavy laden, I'll give you rest, take my yoke upon you, and learn. Learn from me, learn of me. Let me translation says, let me teach you. How many want to be taught by God? Yeah. Praise the Lord. And then we go home now. So. Okay, just let God teach you then. Let me see. This is, we are so, I don't know what it is about us. But, uh, when we let God seem to have his way, he puts, he changes you. He does it and he puts it. Desire in your heart. Hey, it's not you fighting. It's not you trying to do something. It's me. I do it. You can't do it. And you start you start to understand that. And then, you know, I don't know about you, you just keep on going. You know, he's working in us constantly, doing his will as a pleasure. You keep on going, and one day he says, Hey, I'm not where's that thing I used to it used to irritate me. It used to drag me down. It's not there anymore. Where is it? I mean what I'm talking about. And the more we grow in His grace and knowledge, the more in His presence, man, you can see that happening. Amen. Amen. Man, I tell you what, God's here, working in each and every one of us, a bunch of old lugs, lugettes or whatever, changing us, building us, putting an excitement in our heart so we can go and accomplish what He wants us to accomplish. This is, it never hit me like this before. Do you know what every one of us Individually created by Him? Of course. Uh, you say that a million times. I'll keep on saying it. There's no two people alike. Do you know He's given us all talents? And now He's just sitting, just thinking about all the talents that people have here that glorifies God when you let Him have you to use your talents. I just think the musicians up here. Man, I don't know. He's going to trip over his beard one of these days. <laughs> he let that visit. His wife will have enough on these days. <laughs> when he's sleeping. Clip, clip. <laughs> hey, you know, Carl's going back to his. <laughs> Just think, though. The talents that, you know, we've wasted. No, we, we, they're misused or wasted or never even used. Do you think that really, really, truly glorifies God when we submit and allow Him to use our talents yeah. for His glory? Amen. Now, if you say you ain't got no talents, you're calling God a liar. Amen. You know, I've never had that talent for me. But if you feel like I can get you away from you, you'll find out what your talents are. Maybe it's just loving somebody, caring for somebody. Just... Letting the glow, your glow, that God puts in your heart, just radiate and others can see in you. That's probably the greatest thing that could happen. True? True. Sean, come here a minute. Yes, Sean. 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 Okay, you got five seconds. What do you want to tell everybody? Does you love everybody? Does Jesus love everybody? Does Jesus love you? Hello. Hi, Sean. Hello. Oh, um, my, um, uh, my room, my roommate, they say talking to me, and um, I was from sad. No, no, I cannot say I'm so by doing no more. Not so bad. <laughs> You know he's got a tear running down his eye. Oh, uh, um, uh, um, okay, Pastor the Mound, no got a job, I'm a sign for uh, Mill uh, Avenue. No got a job, you did. Uh, can I sign? I was carrying a cross in the mail. And then this is in work. My roommate and um, Ronnie. And then I've got a drum and I play the drums with you guys. You yeah. drums for us because you love Jesus. You love Jesus. Yeah. You really, really love Jesus. Yep. Tell everybody you love Jesus.
No, 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 I believe God's good. It ain't fun. Let me tell you something. It ain't fun. Do it all. Do it all. I'm going to tell you what. There's nothing better than just truly serving God. You know, when you do serve God, He brings the past. What His Word says. I want you to catch this. He watches over His Word to perform it. Now, done in decency and order, He wants us to be fruitful and multiply. Is that true? Well, we got a couple couples here that are getting close to getting married. Constance, Luke, come here. What's going to happen Saturday? Saturday, let's see, I got some errands to run. I got, I got something to do. I, I, I know it's important. What's he supposed to do Saturday? Saturday, I own him. Well, come Saturday, I get to say you may now kiss the bride, but not yet. <laughs> Give us a quick testimony. You know, they both went through the program. Yeah, so, I don't know if uh, most of you guys know, I came here about six years ago, came in the first phase, um, just tore up about, you know, 30, 40 pounds lighter, but not in a good way. And I uh, just had been struggling with, you know, horrible, horrible things. I had uh, three heart attacks before I was 26 years old, all from, you know, putting things in my veins that didn't belong there. And uh, it, was, it was pretty rough. And then I came here, found out God was real. That gave me some direction. You know, I found out God loved me despite me. That gave me some value. So I figured I'd work for the guy, you know. I, the pay's not that great, but I hear the retirement. Uh, I feel like that's, uh, Was what, car thief? Yes. <laughs> he tells everybody that. I'm like, I need to stop it. Yes, my first job was a car thief. My first, <laughs> my first offense was um, Grand Theft Auto at the age of 14. And then I just kind of went nuts. I was into every single drug that you could think of. I was into heroin. I had lost my son. I had lost my daughter. I had lost like everything underneath the sun you could. Um, and then I came to church on the street when I was 30. Um, I'm 36 now. I still look good. So... <laughs> So, um, yeah, I'm 28. So I came here and I started uh, working out and going through the discipleship program and uh, making Pastor Walt do the plank like in workout like every single day just to see if anybody could beat him and nobody could ever, ever. So I started doing that and then I became the assistant director for first phase and an outreach director and a house mom and um, the director of the Hope Wing program, uh, which is where I found out where. God wanted me to, because I mean, like, my whole life, I spent my life beating up on girls and thought that's what God had for me. I was like, I, I literally did it for a profession and thought that's what God had. And what I didn't realize is that the enemy just did that for me to keep me away from what he, what God had really had for me. And that is to reach out to these beautiful, amazing women that I love so much and would do anything for. I'm done. done. You know, she's not kidding. She had JC's job. She was running a workout. Boy, she was mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you know what's so neat is how God can take people, raise them up, talents, abilities. You know, the cream will rise to the top. Yeah. Your talents, your abilities, if you listen to God, will rise to the top. Actually, he's, he's the Dream Center's governor over Church on the Street. He was one of our disciples. I was just sharing with Pastor our friend yesterday or two days ago or something like that. I had Pastor Pete's old desk. And I was sitting on the other side of it at one point getting kicked out. And now, now I got his job. No, I'm kidding. I'm you know what? We're going to see how the cream rises to the top when we get married. Now the Bible says God watches over his word and perform it. And it's his word to the woman submissive unto the man. What do you think? We'll know in a couple weeks if he, if he can get all beat up. Can you 
we should admit to you. I can. I've actually started taking some classes because I really. Like <laughs> God does have a better plan than we've ever taken to imagine. And this is part of it. Done right. Just his timing and everything, it's, it's, really, it's really exciting and neat just to see how God is able to get out of his life, to fix us, to give us new hope, new peace, to want to, to desire, to, to go out there and do it. And by the way, he can rejuvenate you. He can get you fired up faster and mess. How many been getting, that, uh, the, how many got fired up by meth? <laughs> meth? Did I say meth? Yeah. Let you know. No, seriously. Let's this, this let this thing happen. And let's just see what, what God's going to be able to do in each and every one of our lives. Amen? Meth cross is ready. Bring him in. Now, I don't know if I should do this or not, but I'm going to do it. Johnny, come here. Hurry up, real quick. Real quick, does he look banged up? He look alright. I just want to tell you guys, Jesus has your back. Amen. As long as you're doing what He told you to do, He has your back. He called me up here because yesterday I, I crashed my bike. Okay? I was I tumbled 85 feet. I slid my bike 200 feet. Wow. That's it. My butt's a little sore. I slid to the feet, but that's about you ain't gonna see that. I say that to say this: we're hitting the prisons in 11 days. Okay? The devil doesn't want that. He does that every time we hit these prisons. We're going with Jay, so anybody that wants to be involved, you know, talk to Jay, man. We're going to El Paso. We're hitting two adult prisons. I'm going to preach in the youth prison. And we're going to do it all in concert. We raised the money already. So the devil he, the devil can't touch you. Amen. The devil can't touch you. You need to know this, you know. And you're preaching now. <laughs> Let's pray for him. Heavenly Father, you chose him. I mean, he came out of prison. What a, what a wonderful story in his life. He ain't perfect. Nobody's perfect. But God, you've been able to use him here. Unbelievably, and you're going to use him as, as he goes to the, the prisons and just shares because he's been there. He knows how to talk to these guys. So we just pray the anointing of God would be all over him and Jay as they go to those those prisons. In Jesus' name, bring presence. Told me not to, so I didn't. What? Okay, but you, why did you go up? Oh, because the spirit told you to. We know because I was scheduled to. Next. <laughs> oh, no, it was fine. I was finding at first, so you know, because I just I didn't know what it was. And just like any other hours that I go to, I just I don't know. I feel uncomfortable, and, and I don't know. I just kind of want to know what it is. And, and once I felt that comfort, you know, I just was fired up, and like Pastor Wall is, and I just kind of went out there and. and you glad you did? Yeah. I think it was yesterday we caught you doing something. Anyway, I said, you know what? I want everybody here to go out and tell somebody about Jesus. What would you commit to do? I uh, go out there and tell someone about Jesus. Did you do it today? Oh uh, yes, I did by spirit. Uh, <laughs> no, you open your mouth. Oh. We had, a, we had a great time out there watching uh, everybody, you know, just kind of... I know, just sitting and watching everybody going to hell. <laughs> playing all their games. <laughs> you got to tell them they can't do that. The way it waits is in his death. Amen. So, you're going to do that though, right? Tell something about Jesus this week. Hopefully I can, yeah. Oh. Oh. Hopefully. I know you can. You're going to do it. 
I was. I was. Um, it was great. I love crosswalk actually. Um, one thing that caught my eye was a woman asked for a Bible, and it, her hunger for the Word of God was beautiful. And there are people out there. They were sitting on the street. They're living out there. There's a hunger for the Word of God. There's a hunger for Jesus. We just have to fill that need, and we never know where it can be. It can be anywhere. So that was the thing that was that caught my eye. Amen. Um, it was really and I could do crosswalk every Sunday. That's how much I love it. Thank you. Okay, well, I mean, what? How was it? Seven. Uh, it was amazing out there. Uh, it was really cool. Uh, God had told me, you know, put it on my heart to uh, bring out my water bottle and like fill it up with water, like wash it and fill it out, with, fill it up with ice and water. And so we were just walking around, and it was amazing to see how uh, the the hunger and the thirst, you know, for the word, but also being able to give them food, you know what I mean, and applicable things instead of just you know sitting there saying God bless and be warm, you know what I mean, just walking away. In other words, not just watching. <laughs> but being doers of the word, not deceiving ourselves or deceiving ourselves. You know, I don't think you realize how hurting, I mean, how much people truly, truly hurt. I mean, if you let God show you, see if you don't, you're caught up in. No, they just don't want to work. No, that could be. But they're hurting. They're lost. They need something. Are we going to show them? We're going to give them what we got? Yes. We need to pray for them. We need to love them. But we need to go out there also and tell them. Not only tell them, but show them, and take some, something out with them, with us to help them. Yeah. How about you there, young man? <laughs> well, I mean, fantastic. I love the crosswalk today. It's my first time. I went out there, and I was coming across, was walking past Circle K, and I met a, I met a young lady, and uh, she was, uh, she's, she said, I said, do you want a Bible? She said, no, but I love some prayer. I don't want to carry that around. I said, well, okay. I started praying for her, and then she goes in the store. Then I met her man, and he didn't want to give me his name. I said, hey, so you want the Bible? And um, he said, no, I don't want to give you my name. He starts going, and I started praying for him, and he just starts crying. He starts crying and breaking down. And it's amazing the power of prayer and how it can reach somebody's soul. And uh, she comes out the store, and then we give him we give him the word now and uh, gave, some, gave him some pastries, and God's doing the work out there on the street. Amen. Amen. Tell them. How are they going to know unless you tell them? <laughs> you know me, I like to get in the trenches. I like to go and I like to be with them. I like to sit with them. And I like to listen to what they got to say. You know, bother them the most, you know. Um, listen, you know, just be an open, you know, be their ear when they need something. You know, sometimes people just need to hear instead of talk so much. You know? Amen. Amen. You just stop and listen. To the things you get out of <laughs> Amen. <laughs> what do you think about... Going to Scottsdale after the golf tournament. Can you imagine what it was like last night? What's it be like out there tonight? What's it like out there the other night? Friday night. It was wild. It was packed. It was wild. I've never seen it that packed before. But um, yeah, it was. Uh, it was definitely fun. You know, and Journey she made it rain on us. Some. Uh, with some script, with uh, little blunts, man, wherever she's at. We made it rain on him. We went out there and hit him. Journey crew. <laughs> This is a young man who goes to Scottsdale to tell people about Jesus. Yeah. What is he talking about? Uh, I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> um, you got fun out there the other night. Yeah, well, there, there was this guy that he was like motioning for us to come, like climb over the wall and come into the pub, and I was like, I can't. And I like have my sign, and he's like, come on. And I, so I walked up and I like, you know, I like gave him some. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's interesting, this sweet young little thing used to live in Las Vegas. And I don't know if you've ever seen what how these people party in Scottsdale. It's open. They're not the bars are open. They're clubs. The restaurants kinda of like during the day and at night. Well she used to do the same thing in Vegas. Vegas. Yeah. But do you feel at home? Yeah. I'm well. But you wanna go back and do that again? No. Of course not. No, not unless I'm talking about God. It's, it's just different. Like, you can have fun and be sober and yeah. just, like, actually, people just, you know, feed off of that vibe when you're, like, walking around like, Jesus, you know, and they just get all excited, but they know why we're there. We're not there to drink or 
Yeah. Not if you got a Jesus sign, God loves everybody, and you're running around. What signs do you have? Um, forgot? No, I forgot. Miss Park picks it out. Oh. Anyway, it's just kind of fun when it <laughs> run around out there just in the middle of it. There's people all over the streets because it's so packed. We're right in the middle of a Jesus sign. They're bumping in us. We're bumping into them. Edgar's got the cross. He's bumping into them. Oh, Lord, say. <laughs> Nothing fun. No vicious. Then we got a young man here that's got a sign. You know, it's truly amazing. Here's the deal. Every, every one of us could carry a sign. You don't have to say a word, just carry a sign. <coughs> you know, maybe some of us need to just go out there and try it. Say, I can't talk, I'm even afraid. Well, if you got, how many people we take out there? About 30? Oh, you weren't there. Uh, Daniel, how many people we take to Scottsdale and they'll have me on there? About 30? Uh, yeah, a little At least, yeah. Man, we got signs all over. we got a sign. we got crosses turning loose out in the street. He's got his sign. See, the thing is, you don't realize... You can do this. And not only will it encourage other people, but it will encourage you. Because God's chosen us and called us to go. And I, get, I just love to see him go. He's, he goes out there, man, he's got that thing. He got a grunt on his face. Uh-oh, he got something going. We're going to try to get him to preach here next Sunday night. Amen. If it's... You get all warmed up and fair. All right. All right. God bless you. I'll order Hi, Pastor Wall. It was uh, pretty good. I love going to the crosswalk. I volunteer as much as possible whenever I'm available to do it. And um, today I ran into somebody I knew from uh, jail. And he was going into Taco Bell to get something to eat with his uh, new girlfriend. And uh, Christopher Acuna also knows this man. It's Michael. We also know him as Scarface. Um, and he just wanted to pray with me. And he was telling us about his life turned around ever since he got out of jail. And he's... Uh, because he's following God as well, and he's he's trying to find a home church, I believe, and he I told him about church on the street, and so he might come here, but he definitely dedicated himself to going out, out to Jack in the Box next week, so uh, I was hoping Chris could join me so that we can sit, see him, pray for him, and tell him a little bit more about the program and get him in here if we can. Amen. You see the effect we can have to people we know. God bless you guys. You know, we're a family. And... Family, they get engaged and follow those. Then there's struggles and problems in the family. Well, there was a tragedy that happened the other night. What are you doing? And totally, totally, completely unaware. In fact, her mom was taking care of her grandma, and her grandma, you know, was, they thought she was going to pass away. Soon, it was expected. Her mother's the one that passed away. Just totally, totally out of bed. We need to pray for her. How many have needs? No, no, no. Let's pray for everybody's needs. Chaplain God, would you pray for all their needs? Father, we come to you this morning, God. And we, we thank you that you're a God that's not so far away, Father, that we can't touch you, Lord God. You said the effectual and fervent prayer of the righteous will avail much, Father. And so, God, I know that there are many needs, God, from from physical and emotional and mental, God, and spiritual needs, Father God, uh, financial needs, Lord God. And Lord, we come to you, Father, because you are a good God. You are a giving God. You are a faithful God. And we thank you, Lord, that we can come, Father God, and bring our petitions to you, Lord God, as we worship you first, God, as we give you, we put you first place in our lives, Father. Lord, we know that all these things will be added to us, Lord God, but we want to be faithful to pray for the hurting. We want to be faithful to pray for the needs, Lord. And, and Lord, we know that there's a lot of families out there who go through tragedies on a, on a regular basis, and sometimes it seems like it's unfair what some people have to go through. It seems like some families go through it harder than others, Lord. And Lord, we want to be sensitive to that, God, but we know that you are greater, God. You are a God of deliverance. You are a God of healing. You are a God who answers prayers, God. You are a God who will supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory. And we thank you, God, for your goodness and your faithfulness to us, Lord. And we pray that you bless this house, God. That you would touch your people, Father, as we seek your face in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. Let's just pray for it. You know, just think about that. Remember, we're family. Man, when I heard about that, I was so, oh, I couldn't believe it. 
You know, I mean, we're ready to go out and do something, you know, fight, Bless take you. this. When somebody's swinging at you, you're ready to fight back, or somebody wants to quit or whatever. Well, something like this happens, you know, it's just... And I like that, because we're part of the family. We've been praying for we got on the prayer list. Isn't that something? To know that you are part of the family, you do, you do care, because God made it this way. We are part of the family of God. When one of us hurts, if you're, if you're sensitive, the rest of us want to step up. Amen? Amen. Let's hear the word of God. Hillary, we love you, and may the God of all comforts continue to comfort you. Amen. 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 The children of Israel were told to be set apart, be holy, and Jesus says the same thing for us. Open up your Bibles to Matthew chapter 5. This week, the first phase disciples is, <clears throat> are learning about kingdom principles. What does it mean to be in the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven? It's really a lot different than the world that we live in. So let's take a look at chapter 5 of Matthew. We're going to listen to 1 through 20. Matthew 5. Seeing the crowds, they went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they shall be satisfied. <clears throat> Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. <laughs> Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law of the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not an iota, not a dot, will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Pastor Bill, you want me to take the offering? You know, my, uh, my heart was kind of touched, you know, by the tragedy that Hillary went through. Um, she's part of our uh, mountain ministry, and she comes every Saturday like clockwork. She comes out and drives over here and joins us and goes up to the mountain with us. And uh, Saturday she didn't make it, and we, we totally understood why. But we did pray for you, Hillary, and we prayed for your family, you know, uh, up on the mountain. And uh, it's just, you know, it shows me that... You know, when we're doing the right things for the Lord, the devil's going to come at us hard, you know. And uh, he's going to do everything he can to try to trip us up. But God allows everything that goes on in our life to happen. He does it for a reason, to teach us, to train us, to build us up, to make us those strong you know, men and women of God's army. 
because the devil is not a nice guy. And he's not going to go easy on us. He's going to give us everything that he's got, and we've got to be ready for it. That's what Church on the Street's all about. You know, we, a lot of people in this world accept Christ into their life, and they walk away, and that's that. You know, we're the ones being trained to be the soldiers. You know, to go out and to fight this fight. And to bring as many people as we can into the into the fold. And Hillary, my hat's off to you. You know, all that you've done recently is going from the jails to the prisons. And, you know, God's got his eye on you. And he's got big plans for you here. Amen? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just, we just come before you this morning, Father. Your army in training, Lord. Lord, we just ask, Father, that you just put a blessing upon this tide, Lord. And that, that what, is, what is given today, Lord, goes back 100% into this ministry, Lord, to train the people, to feed the people, to bring them the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we lift this all up to you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen.
Well, we're here from Jesse. Turn the video on. and sisters, allow me to share the exciting progress we are making with our new church building here in Nicaragua. On November 28, 2017, heavy equipment was brought in to clear the land to prepare for the foundations. As we build the Lord's church, the forms are being set and the concrete is being poured. Soon, the brick and mortar are being placed in position for the first phase of our Lord's temple. Many of the young men from the community are participating in the construction by carrying water and well barrels and helping in preparing the rebar. All while still having church services and maintaining our outreaches to the community. People in this region are truly really grateful. Soon the walls will be going up and the church will be taking its forms. We walk by faith, for we are the temple of the living God. God and they will be my people. Praise the Lord and God bless you. This is Pastor Jesse giving you an update of what is what the beautiful things that God is doing down here in Nicaragua. God bless you. Lord, there goes. He came through the program. Just like many of us, talents and so forth. Anyway, we're going to send him, we sent him $4,000 so far. Tomorrow we're going to send him another 1000 So if anybody wants to put a little nickels, dimes, quarters, pennies in there, that's fine. Because we're going to send it to him. And you know, there's so many, many needs in different places. But still, God's able to meet all of the needs according to his riches and glory. How many believe that? So if you want to do something, just come on up and put it in the hat. In the meantime, we're going to take communion. God bless three minutes. I haven't seen you long enough to give you a hug in a long time. Did anybody tell you today that somebody loves you? It's you. No. I love you. We get the uh, ushers, pastors, pastors. We're going to take communion if you can just pass off the elements. Everybody just take one. And then we'll explain what you need to do with it. Apparently, you're putting all your money in there. We went to jail one time when she's preaching there, and she gave me a check for $13,000 for the work of the ministry. You know, you can't outgive God, so whatever God puts in your heart, that's fine. You know what you got to do is ask you to put something in your heart. And if He puts it in your heart, that means He's going to help you do it. Understand what I'm saying? And then, that means you give, he's going to give back to you. In fact, he challenges us, doesn't he? See, if he didn't open up the windows and have him pour out blessings, we can't contain. I tell you, I just, I just love to grow in his grace and knowledge. How many like to grow in his grace and knowledge? Well, I think we got some people here this morning that have grown here, and they're going to graduate. And they have grown in his grace.
soon, you know, going out there, you know, my heart is to do the work of the ministry, you know, stay here as long as I can and be used by God, and whenever he chooses to call me out of here, you know, I'll go out there and continue to serve him. Amen. 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 Well, nobody here going to call him out, they're going to call him out in the streets and the jails and prisons, and, amen. He's been through a whole lot here, he just went through, he's graduating from third phase. Maybe by the end of the day or tomorrow. <laughs> I tell you, I just love it. this old rascal. He's no order in his junkyard dog, yeah, yeah. but he loves Jesus yeah. and his wife chosen. Yeah. So, with honor. Yeah. Red. God before I got here, and uh, I knew this morning when I woke up, I needed God more than I needed him yesterday. Um, and that's my testimony, is that I'm constantly needing God, I want his provision, I want his grace, and I want his mercy in my life. Um, without him, I'm, I'm not anybody, you know, he, he created me, and uh, for a purpose, like you said earlier today, and uh, I just want to walk in that purpose, and, uh, you know, love people, that's my, uh, my goal, you know, that's the goal, is to love people, and, uh, what better place than here? Because there's a lot of people. <laughs> there's a lot of people to love. And uh, I learned uh, I have a lot of uh, issues that uh, God's pulling out of me. He's pulling out of that dross out of my out of my heart. And uh, he's helping me face my, uh, you know, um, challenge, the, the battles of my life. Man. He's helping me battle, battle it. You know, he's helping me battle through the things that I thought I would never do. Um, and what better place than uh, here to do that, you know, is to uh, step out in faith and say, uh, uh, Jesus loves you. Yeah. God loves you, um, and so that's what it was. Amen. What's your shirt say? I have no idea. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Wait, look. Oh, you know what happened last night? They were up in Scottsdale. Yeah. Like you know, we're going on a Friday night. Well, one of our guys works up there. It's long story anyway. Somebody came by and, and saw the church on the street shirt. He said, I want that shirt. So he gave it to him. He went and partied all night in that shirt. Amen. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Can you put it shut or not? <laughs> what are you going to do now? Uh, my plan is to keep serving God and uh, keep learning. You know, I want to stay uh, humble and learn. And um, I'll be going to Colorado City, Lord willing, uh, sometime soon just to uh, uh, be available to be willing and to show up and say, here I am. Uh, you know, I don't have much to offer, but Jesus Christ has everything to offer. And I know Amen. He'll, 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 he'll do it. He'll do the work. He's always done the work, and just being willing and able is uh, what I, all I know how to do the work right now. So oh, they do. Available. Availability. Even though you don't want the shirt on. What's on? Father, we just pray for him as he goes up to Colorado yeah, yeah. We just pray the power of God will be all over him. Yes, Lord, you, you, you can take a humble person and truly, truly use him far greater than you can with somebody that thinks they're the best. So we just pray for him, God. Just use him up there, my Lord. Just to, whatever it takes to win and build people for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Timothy. Yeah. Test in my life, you know. Yeah. But um, like I said in first phase when I graduated, I wanted it. I wanted it bad, you know. I left everything behind, my past. But um, yeah. I put myself in, in the, some positions to get. I got kicked out. <laughs> you know, looking at the birds. And, 
Uh, I was you know, that was that was a big thing for me. So, uh, so uh, the things I've done, God forgave me and I forgave myself. I'm not perfect, but um, I surrendered myself at the end. To Pastor Daniel, he told me, uh, you know, he did a lot. You know, he, he just said, Tim, you gotta, you gotta pray. You know. And the things I did when I made a mistake, I never, I never stopped praying, you know, because God, He had a plan for me. So, um, you know, the only thing I can say, when you make mistakes, you know, you got to get up. Cause, uh, the loser gonna, gonna lose, but whoever get up, you know, you're going to stay alive, you know. Just, this whole life and everything we're going through, it's a struggle, but, um, you know, only the strong survive, you know. Pastor Daniel, he had... Key power words for me. Uh, we haven't talked that much, but the times it was all encouragement, you know. So when I came out here, I was in fear of just doubt, worry, confusion. And Satan, he uh, represents all those things, but uh, right now I'm free, you know. Guess yeah. what? <laughs> With honors. <laughs> Can we have your friend come up? I want her to give you something. You know he's graduating with honors. What? You know he did very, very well here. But I think he's got a question he wants to ask you. Oh, wow. Well, first, before all, <laughs> I want to thank everybody in this room, especially you, Pastor Walt and uh, Miss Louise. You guys, none of this is possible without your your servitude to God. Um, gentlemen, I love every single one of you guys. It's been a pleasure with you, and I can't wait to see where we're gonna go from here. Um, Pastor Daniel, can I have you come up here, please, sir? Um, you have something on <laughs> What hers? Simple man, I'm gonna stay a simple man. 
I just want to let God be God. Because He knows how to do that. Now, you can get some of the brilliant people, you know, get into the Word of God and never, never touch the body. Some of us simpletons, we can jump in and never drown. You hear, understand what I'm saying? So the, the, the simple thing to me is the most profound thing I've ever learned is simply just letting Him do what He needs to do is be God. Yeah. 
That song is beautiful. Yes, sir. <laughs> what happens when you let God be God? Real quick. Where you came from, what you did for 15 years, all of a sudden, what happened to you? Um, uh, I guess I was the un most unsubmissive person on this planet. Uh, just fought the system, fought everything. Uh, even in prisons and in jails that I would go to, I fought the guards, fought my own race, I fought everybody. And uh, uh, recently I've learned that wearing a vest is... Um, <laughs> yeah. is, um, is beautiful. Amen. Uh, the, uh, the benefits from obedience I get in us. Uh, I hate that word, but I love it now. But um, it's uh, incredible. You know, I have a peace. Women. Guess who wrote that song? Yeah. 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 I love it. And see, let me tend to. That's why I said the two of you. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? He's let God be God. It looks like his family's starting to things are starting to work out a little better there. After all, he'd get out of prison, go have a kid, get back to prison, get out of prison, just you know, just. It messed up his family for all these years. And then he, all of a sudden, he would, when we put him on ice, he would, nope, 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 he'd leave. And he'd come back. With the, you know, this woman again. Nope! But all of a sudden he realized, hey, these people care about me. Is that right? He was tremendously talented. He's written a lot of songs. And I'll tell you what, just letting God be God. Thank you. How many want to just let God be God? Yeah. You think God knows how to be God? Yes. Oh, I'll tell you, he does. I, I remember when I was a little kid, about seven, eight, nine years old, whatever. These little packs. Yeah. Anybody know, remember Kool Aid packs? Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. you know. Well, they had little packs. For 10 cents, you could buy seeds. Yeah. Different kind of flower seeds. Everybody remember that? Yeah. So, I don't know, you know, I was always curious. Anybody else curious? I said, well, you know what, maybe I can grow flowers. See if I can grow flowers. I'm going to florist, but just see if I can. You know, so I, I bought 10 cents, bought a little pack of seeds, and put, put a seed in the ground, you know, dug a little hole, put a seed in the ground, and covered it up, put a little water on it, got a little fertilizer, and sit there and watched it. <laughs> Everything, nothing happened. Well, finally I said, I guess I don't, know to, I don't know how to plant seeds. I don't know how to grow seeds. I don't know how to grow flowers. About a week later, it seemed like I walked there and looked at it. Something popped up. So I put a little bit more water on it. It's growing. Then all of a sudden, I just thought, you know what? You plant a seed in the ground. You water it. You fertilize it. You get out of the way and let it alone, it's going to grow. Amen. It knows what to do. You know why? Because God put it in its heart, whatever you call it, the seed, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just letting God be God. That's all a seed does. And it just has a tendency to grow. How many believe that? I do. Whoa! In Hebrews 13, 20, New Living Translation, and now, may the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, equip you with all you need for doing His will. And may He produce in you, through the power of Jesus Christ, all that is pleasing to Him. Jesus is a great shepherd of the sheep, an everlasting covenant. Signed with His blood. He knows how to be God. That's what it's going to take. To get us free. He signed us in His blood. We just accept Him. We just let Him be God. Amen. To Him be glory forever and ever. Amen. 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 To me, just let God be God. The devil wants to draw us away from the truth from God by tempting us and trying to convince us that He has a better way. Is that true? <coughs> Matthew 4, 8-10. through 10. Again, the devil took Him up an exceedingly high mountain, and showed him all the kingdom of the world and their glory. 
sometimes, you know, you go over to Scottsdale, and some of those women show those guys. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Even when it's freezing. Being tempted by the devil. And some of the guys reach in their pocket and pull out a few hundred dollar bills. They got their muscles and they're strutting around too. That's the devil, isn't it? Yeah. Enticing people. And so, and there's a guy that we're praying for him. His name is Drew. He's a very extremely unbelievably talented man. I think he owns three bars over there. And he just was working on one. He just Bless converted you. it. And he really got this thing up and going. And I know he's been here. He's kneeled at this altar, gave his life to the Lord, Amen. prayed for him about every week out there. Last Friday, man, it was week before he prayed with us. But last Friday, it was so packed that I guess he couldn't come out. Now, I know how the devil has enticed him, extremely, extremely gifted and talented man. Now, God's given us all the talents. Now, how are we going to use them? Well, he's using his. And there's an excitement because you can just see how his, his, his places stand out from the rest of them. That's his ability. But God put it in my heart to pray for him. In fact, I was running this morning, ran a couple miles, the whole two miles I prayed nothing but for him. Because I believe God put it in my heart, God wants to get a hold of him, but all of these glittering attractions. Is working against him. So, and again, the, de de <laughs> the devil took it. Remember, I'm a preacher that can't preach, but I'm going to keep on preaching. You ever heard of a preacher who can't talk? Well, Moses said he couldn't talk, didn't he? Well, I know I can't. Where's Aaron? I guess that's Daniel. Again, the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the king of the world in their glory. And he said to him, All these things I want to give you if you'll fall down and worship me. How many of us are worshiping? You know what I'm talking about. The devil tempts us and off we go. Well, he's got something better than God if I go to church, man. It's, what a terrible, boring life that is. So please don't walk here having fun. <laughs> Look at what I'm doing. Look at I'm getting away with. Yeah? What are you getting away with? What are you getting, are you getting hooked up in? You know, I believe this is all my heart. And I, I think one time I heard the devil laughing at me. Because he had me hooked. This is what's Christian. You know what I'm talking about? Man, he'll do everything he can to appease you, to tempt you. And when you finally go and submit, then he's got a hold on you. he got his hooks in you and you can't get him out. You can't. Then I think he sits back and laughs and watches us truly, truly, truly being tormented. Amen? How many of you know what I'm talking about? Come on, how many has been there and done that? Or you didn't mean to do it, but you did it. Verse 10. And Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Amen. Remember, the thief, John 10.10, 10, comes to kill, steal, and destroy he wants to entice us. He tells us how wonderful these things are. Look at that one. Look at this. Bless you. Look at man, what all this money is going to do. Well, you go right ahead. The thief comes but to kill, still destroy. What did Jesus say? I've come to give you life. And life more abundantly. I love this scripture. I love them all. But this is this. Daniel 11.32. New Living Translation. He will flatter those who have violated the covenant and win them over to himself. <coughs> We're corrupted by flattery. How many I'm talking about? Oh, aren't you wonderful? Boy, you're so you're so handsome. Oh, you're so beautiful. <laughs> Come on, man. I, here, I, I know where you can make some easy money. All I want you to do is, you know, get your motorcycle. You know, put a little something under the seat and just go across the border, man. I'll give you, you make five grand. Now, that's all I got to do? I had fun. I like riding my motorcycle. And, you know, I can stick something under the seat. Nobody's going to know about it. And just make it cross a straight line. 
stay blind, give somebody something, they're going to give me about five thousand dollars. Man, that's good. I can make money like that. You know how hard it is to go out and make work and make money? Corrupted by flatteries. Man, you're a good. You're good on that motorcycle, man. You you fall down, you can flip over three times, come bouncing back up. You might get another one, go do that again. I want to just time take some drugs with you. How many understand what I'm talking about? Corrupted by flatteries. How many of you have been corrupted by flattery? Somebody told you you know what I'm talking about? I can, I can remember my dear wife sitting down in the Pocatecca room, that's the bowling alley, in Thousand Oaks. And I guess I enticed her a little bit to drink a little once in a while. She got, but when I was gone, you know, running crazy, I understand she used to get down in the Pocatecca room, and they had cheese there, and you'd buy herself a couple drinks, and she'd sit up on those high stools, and they'd philosophize and talk about it you know, how religion and how bad things are and philosophies and all this kind of stuff, corrupted by flatteries. How many I'm talking, I'm talking about there? And it could be anything. Corrupted by flatteries. Then when you get corrupted, there again. You get hooked. And the Bible says, but the people that know their God will be strong and resist Him. We can be corrupted by flatteries and many of us have. In other words, we've fallen short. We've allowed sin to rule and reign in our life. But here comes God saying, listen, you turn to me. Let me show you what I can do, will do, have done. I'm going to set you free from all that. Amen. And then he says, if you do follow me, I love this scripture. Psalms 119, 165. Great peace have those who love your law. You're not corrupted by flattery. You love the law of God. This is Right? Great, great peace have those who love your law, and nothing causes them to stumble. Amen. Nothing Amen. causes them to stumble. Amen. Stumble if you love the law of God. And by the way, you may fall down, get, you're going to bounce right back up because the Bible says just man falls, but he ain't going to stay down. Yeah. He's going to get right back yeah. up again. See, we're talking about reality here. How I many I'm talking about? Amen. How many realize we need something other than a philosophy? Yeah. Suck a little wine, eat a little cheese, talking about how smart you are. We need something <laughs> more than a philosophy, don't we? Yeah. We need the power of God. And we got the power of God. Great peace. And I'll tell you something. You be serious about God, you're going to have great peace. Yes. And I'll tell you something. But this is your pipe of smoking. If you say you love God, you ain't got great peace, I question your relationship with Him. Come on. But it's not working in my life. I'll follow it because you stopped it. Yeah. You let God be God in your life. He will, sir, He will set you free like Amen. He has. Amen. All those Amen. years you know that boo, that crazy lifestyle that's destroyed you. You start to get peace. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Great peace of those who keep His law. Think about that. Great peace of all those who love your law. Nothing will cause you to stumble. And then I went on a little further. In fact, I was talking about this a little bit yesterday. Proverbs uh, 4.18. New Living Translation. For the way of the righteous is like the first gleam of dawn. Man, I was looking at the clock this morning waiting for the, the dumb thing to click. We've got one of these, you know, what do you call those clocks we have, Louine? It beeps and buzzes and... <laughs> Grandfather. No, grandfather clock. Yeah, one of those things, you know. I'm waiting for it. So I get out of bed, man, I get out of bed. And I was praying, so, you know, I just, oh, yes, God, yes, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Really? And I was thinking, yes, the way of the righteous is like the first gleam of dawn. Amen. First gleam, man, I'm up, I'm ready to go. Which shines even brighter until the light Till the full light of the day. That's the way of God. He puts a joy, he puts a peace in your heart. You know, I mean, that first gleam, you get up and man, yes, 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 yes. yes. Then you're ready to go after then. You start, it starts building in you. It starts getting stronger and stronger as the day goes by. Amen? Amen. But the way of the wicked is like complete darkness. That's the word of God, by the way. Those who follow it have no idea what they're stumbling over. 
Let me read it again. Great peace have those who love your law, and nothing causes them to stumble. Amen. But the way of the wicked is like complete darkness. Those who followed it have no idea what they're stumbling over. Verse 25, look straight ahead. Fix your eyes on what lies before you. Make out a straight path with your feet. Then stick to the path and stay safe. Don't get sidetracked. Keep your feet from following evil. Man, I mean, it's all here. Just simply, simply letting God be God. Amen? Amen. Letting God be God. You know what? This is some thoughts I just you really got. This, I did this for it. Just come in here. Just let God be God. It's His will that none perish, but all be saved. Let God be God. He don't want to perish. He came that we might have life more abundantly. That we will prosper and be in health as our soul prospers. Just let God be God. That we are more than conquerors, more than overcomers through Christ who strengthen us. Then we'll grow in His grace and knowledge. And if we be willing and obedient, He'll give us all we need. And it's going to come to pass in our life. He's going to manifest it to us. Get out of the way and let God be God. Why? Because He set the captive free. Meaning sin doesn't have control over us anymore. If we let God be God, and he, he did it all in the cross, God was being God when He got on that cross. Amen. He knew it was going to take to give us new hope, new mind, redeem us, set us free from ourselves, from the power of sin, and so easily, easily besets us. Do you know that? That's what He did. Let, all we got to do now is put the seed. Let it be planted in us. And just let it grow. If you don't, if you look down in a week later, nothing's happened, it's growing. He's always, always working in you to know Him. To do His will. He's working in us to do His will and His good pleasure. I don't know, you'll just put that inside you. It is working. And you know when this other stuff comes live to you, this ain't going to work, this ain't right. You know what? Where did I find, I just said that. Where, where was that out I just said? Oh my goodness. Did I lose it? I gotta say this again if I can find it. But the way of the wicked is like complete darkness. Who follow it have no idea what they're stumbling over. But the way of the righteous is like the gleam of dawn, which shines brighter and brighter as the day goes on by. Right? You see what I'm saying? It'll become real to us. Sin does not longer. We're not blinded. We're not living in darkness anymore. He's illuminated us. He gives us new hope, new purpose, new life that we can see, we understand. It becomes part of us. We're no longer controlled by sin. He starts laughing at us. You just say, you dumb, stupid devil. You're going to hell. I ain't. I'm going to start laughing at you and rub it in, you dumb devil. You've been rubbing it in me. Come on, come on. All my life, you've been putting me down, telling me this ain't going to work, that ain't work, even as Christians. You, think, you, you know, who do you think you are as a Christian? I know I think I am because I'm letting God be God. He's showing me who I am. And you let me God be God. I'm, you have no longer dominion over me. So put that in your pipe and smoke it, devil. And I go, well, I've never been smoked that stuff. I smoked cigarettes. But some of you say, well, I ain't going to smoke that stuff anymore. That you had me smoking, devil. I'm going to be in my right mind. You know what's in my right mind? God. Working in us, doing His will, doing His, His pleasure. Drawing us, lifting us up of the muck in the mark. How many believe that? Yes. Man, it all happened at the cross. Yes. He's going to establish His church. Yes. This is where I want to come in right now. This is what He's doing. He's establishing His church. We're His church. Amen. And the gates of hell is not going to prevail. He has called us, He's chosen us, and He commanded us, go take the land. So guess where we're going? Take the land. Gallup. Man, I'm telling you what. Three people from Gallup, stand up. Very good. Man, these people are first. You just got here four days ago. Yeah, come here real quick. Yeah. Man, I heard her just, oh, she, actually, she's doing time here. She was sent just here. Is that right? Real quick. I don't want to embarrass you.
here right now just trying to figure out what God has in store for me. I know it is something. I don't know exactly what, but four days I know that I completely feel different than I did. I was in jail Wednesday. <laughs> and I'm here now, so. I'm just going to watch her grow. Watch her get on fire. Man, she's got that little gleam, but, you know, in the dawn. But just wait. Just, she's in the dawn of this thing. Just wait and see what happens to her. Amen. Amen. So you're going to establish this church. Acts 1 8. We all know that. But you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come unto you. You shall be witness to me, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the other most parts of the earth. He wants to rise us up and take his gospel into all the world, winning and building people for his honor and glory. Amen? Amen. Amen. Listen to this. I'm going to quit on this because we're going to take me in a second. <clears throat> Hebrews 12. One, one and two. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by the great cloud of witnesses, that's the people that went before us, yeah. let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily besets us. Come on. Yeah. That sin that so easily besets us. How many I'm talking about there? Yeah. Let us run with endurance the race that's be set before us. Look it on to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the glory that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. 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 That's what he's telling us. Let me have my way in your life. Let God be God. Hallelujah. That's powerful. That's, it's alive. It'll never die out. And it grows more and more and more as, as the day goes by. Why? Because he wants to show us, make himself alive and real in us to show us that. Now what he can accomplish in us. I'm, I'm excited. Yeah. How many of us are starting to get excited? Yeah. Man, I'll tell you what. I, I, I like that, man. The judge, she actually, she's actually sentenced here from jail. Sentenced here. <laughs> That's something, that's something. How about that? Maybe some of you need me. Uh, okay. How many is really, how many is willing to let God be God? Maybe we've got people here that have never really under even understood. What are you talking about, let God be God? I'll tell you what. It's His will that they perish. All be brought unto repentance. Yes. And he's speaking his word. When his word goes forth, it accomplishes what he wants. And that's to show us who he is, what he's all about, what his plan is for us. So he can show us that he is God and what he wants us to do. And simply, he's got to put it in our heart. He puts the desire in us. We can't do this on our own. We're just dumb sheep. Huh? But really, he puts the desire in our heart. He does. You can't become a Christian. I remember when I was young. You know, my mom used to go, I'll go to one church. My mom, I'll be good. I sit there looking at my watch. And, gonna, you know, I guess I drank too much last night. Well, that's an hour's time for me to go. I ain't going to drink no more. Two hours later, about playing pool, guess what? <coughs> Sunday afternoon. See, God didn't put a desire in my heart to go to church. I thought, man, that's what you're supposed to do. This is what you have to do. And if you be good, it has nothing to do with you being good. Yeah. Yeah. You can't be good on the salvation. You yeah. can't earn it. Yeah. It's God putting the desire in your heart. See, this is the neatest thing. Because He put that desire in your heart, if you'll turn to Him, He'll come in, change you, and show you what He did at the cross. Amen. Not only did He buy us with His blood, but He redeemed us. Amen. Sanctified us. Set us free from yeah. sin. Amen. Sin no longer has... That's what it does truly. Sin doesn't have control over us anymore. That's, right. that's what He did at the cross. Yeah. The thoughts might still be there. But that's all they are, his thoughts. Amen. There's no power behind those thoughts. Nope. Now he's putting the desire in each one of our hearts to turn to him. That's what you feel inside, that peace. Yeah. Or that tugging in your heart right now. Will you let God be God? Will, yes. you, answer, yes. will you answer his call and say, yeah. yes, Lord, I know what I, I need to do. I need to turn my life over to you. Now, you show me what you want me to do. Lord, if I know what you, I'll do it. <laughs> I believe you died that cross for my sins. I know my ways have been wrong. I'm asking you to forgive me and forget. And I'm willing to admit that. Forgive me. 
Is that right, Eric? And say, okay, Lord, here I am. How many is willing to do that? Now, for many of us, we could have been saying, we're still struggling. But he wants to lead us a little higher, too, doesn't he? Yep. He wants to take us out of the, the first phase, second phase, third phase, put us up on the fourth floor, touch him over all those women over there, and brah! And then get married and have to humble herself before a man. Oh, my man. You know, the, the neatest thing is, you let God be God, you ain't going to have, you, no way you're going to have the fun. You truly, really, truly, truly sell out because that's His plan. It truly, truly is. Amen? Amen. Pray with me. Say, Dear God, Dear God, I know what you want me to do. And I want to do it. I'm willing to turn my life over to you. I'm willing to serve you because I know you love me. I know you died on that cross for my sins. Now you show me what your plan is for my life, and I'll do it. I mean that. You take charge of my life. It's yours. In Jesus' name. Amen. Communion. To remember, some of us just need to remember what he's done for us. Man, he did it all on that cross. And uh, 1 Corinthians 11, 20. Three, it says, For I received from the Lord that which you also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus Christ, the same night which you betrayed, took bread. And this is Paul, probably. In his day, and maybe even our day, he was a sinner, sinner. He was an example of how to be a sinner. I mean, a rotten, no good, rebellious, cuss, sinner. And Jesus just got a hold of him, spoke to his heart, knocked him to the ground, and all Paul says, Lord, what would you have me to do? Because Jesus became that real to him. Put the desire in his heart. Jesus told him, and he, he was doing it. Now he's saying, I re for what I received to the Lord, I also deliver to you. He wants us to have the same thing that happened to him. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat. This is Jesus talking now. Take eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Remember what he did on that cross for us? Yeah. Who we are? Be partakers. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant. Being we bring the Holy of Holies and the presence of God any time we want now. That's what this new covenant is all about. We're no longer the law. We're under the grace of God. Saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink in remembrance of me. Let's be partakers. Heavenly Father, we just truly really thank you, Lord, for what you've done for us and how alive you are, Lord. You rose from the dead. You've drawn us onto you, and we come to you. You come live inside of us. And God, we're no longer dead in our trespasses and sins. We are alive. And thank you for showing us that. And God, whatever the plan is you have for us, stir in us, God. Give us anticipation of listening so we can go do it. And I know you want to build your church, and you're going to use us. And I pray, and I believe you're showing me this, you want to go show the whole world what you can do with a bunch of misfits like us. And when it's done, they'll realize it was a bunch of misfits that did it, so it had to be you. Have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. God bless you. Back tonight, Pastor Eugene will be here. You're dismissed. Have a good day. Thank you. <laughs>